Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Strecce, and Yu Pizka as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to fabulous Amsterdam. We're here at KubeCon EU, and I am super excited about this panel. Low key, just like the last one, I may have pulled some strings to make this magic happen. Thankfully, these brilliant women surrounding me were willing to jump in on the fly, and I am just, I'm, I'm just really excited. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I've got Ishelle next to me. Ishelle, welcome. Hello, how Thank you doing? Thank you very much for having me here. I'm super excited. I can tell. You're actually yes. giving me that day two mid-afternoon energy <laughs> that <laughs> I think we all need. I like Loki. Want to like take an IV off you and just under the table yes, stick yes. it in. Stick yeah. it in my arm. Aparna, thank you so much for being here. How Happy are you doing to be today? Here. I'm, do I'm do doing great. Thank you. This is kind of your moment. Is that how it feels? Yeah, I mean, it feels great. It's my first time being a co-chair for uh, KubeCon, and uh, you know, f first time attending a KubeCon in Europe. Um, Amazing. Long time attendee of KubeCon Cloud Native Con in North America, so super excited to be here. Yeah, and Kaslin, how are you feeling? Welcome. Feeling pretty great. This is my people. This is, I think, my eleventh <laughs> KubeCon. These are our people. <laughs> I yes. know. It really does feel like that. And you, I'm going <laughs> to give you the award today. You have the best earrings. Thank you for going pure accessory. Also, like between your shirt and your earrings, you just really. Thank you. Ashley Willis made the earrings, handmade. Love that little <laughs> shout out. We would get, that's like a little designer shout out. This, this is going to be awesome. Ashley is in the tech community and she just likes to do this stuff. <laughs> I know, they look like fun laser cut. I used to work in 3D printing and I'm like, oh yeah. yeah, I can see what you did there. They're amazing. That's very exciting. They're, they're <laughs> red. I'm glad you decided to rock them today without even knowing that you were going to be here <laughs> hanging out with this yes. fabulous panel of women. Kazan, I'm going to keep it on you for a second. In case the audience doesn't recognize your beautiful face, what is it that you do? I am a developer advocate at Google, where I focus on GKE, their managed Kubernetes product, Google Kubernetes Engine, and open source Kubernetes. I've been a part of open source for quite some time, though I really started contributing in 2020, and I was recently nominated to become one of the new co-chairs of SIG Contribex. Whoa, <laughs> congratulations. That's very exciting. Thank you. You feeling good? You having yeah. all the positive vibes from that? Yes, though it's a little intimidating, but I've got a lot of support, so. <laughs> I love that. You know what? I think you're going to crush it. Thank you. Yeah, we'll talk a little <laughs> bit about allyship in our panel. Aparna, you mentioned your role here at KubeCon, CNCF. You wear a lot of hats and have about eight jobs, just like all the other women on the panel. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about your background and what you're doing? Yeah, I'm uh, Director of Production Engineering at Shopify, and I'm responsible for the platform engineering team there. Um, in the, within the community, I'm also uh, co-chair of the CNCF end user developer experience SIG, where I have the opportunity to work with an amazing group of end users of, of CNCF, and we get together and discuss all things related to building and operating a Kubernetes platform. So um, this, this community has, has really uh, helped me learn so much and, and do my job better. Love that. The community is so helpful. I think yeah. that's one of the real magic things. You can feel the energy being here. You're obviously helpful in joining me on this panel last minute, <laughs> but but the, the it, it it is a different culture. I mean, I've lived in the Silicon Valley forever. I'll just say it. It's not the most helpful ecosystem. There aren't a lot of people always reaching out, hey, how you doing? What's going on? You want to learn about this new technology, this new complicated thing like Kubernetes and, and really lifting you up in this open source community. It's just, it's just different. Michelle, you're really repping the brand strong here. Tell us what you do for the frog. Well, actually, I know that I'm a senior software developer. I also a developer advocate, but I'm like you, wearing a lot of hats. Quite literally, <laughs> literally. So punny. Yes. My favorite part yes. Of, the of course. No. Yes, I help organize conferences and conferences. I work a lot in open source. I'm part of different foundations. Right now, I'm part of the OSSF Foundation, the CDF Foundation. I'm an ambassador. I sit down in so many working groups that sometimes I'm like, where am I? <laughs> where are we? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's like that. That's now you're on stage. You know, you never know what's no, going to happen next. But I'm really passionate about open source, about developers, like how to make our lives easier. Like for crying out loud, that's mm -hmm. the objective here. 
all the snaps <laughs> for that. I think uh, making things easy and decreasing complexity, big themes of the show, big themes with Kubernetes in general, quite yeah, honestly. Yeah. And, and KubeCon's kind of a celebration of the whole ecosystem that does make those things easier. I love that. Just before you three, we had wonderful Cassandra, the 19-year-old woman who teaches at Kids Day, which is extraordinarily impressive. She's a little bit of a gateway for folks, for, for young people to, to get into tech. And, and, and she says, we don't even talk about Kubernetes. She just shows them how to make cool stuff, okay. which, I, which I really loved. We are here to at least discuss a little bit about diversity. And this isn't going to be your average women in tech panel because we're all <laughs> old enough to know what those have been like and that no men watch them. So we're going to go ahead and make sure this is a different dialogue. When I asked Cassandra, I thought this was really interesting. So Cassandra started teaching when she was 12. That was exactly. Which is casual, right? Yeah, I mean, us too, right? All of us. <laughs> and, and when I asked her, what's her goal? What, what, is, what does she hope happens seven years from now? She's 19 now. You know, when, when she's 26, what's the conversation we're having here? And it actually kind of broke my heart, but it's true. She said, well, I hope we're not doing women in tech and diversity panels anymore. Now, I don't know about you three. I'm curious about your hot take, but I've, I've been in the industry for 15 years, and it's not a lot's changed. I, w I would say, I mean, it's wonderful to be around three women in yes. positions of power and leadership here within our community. And I do think there's, there's a lot of reasons to give hope, and we certainly all are allies for each other. But what, I mean, do you agree? Do you feel like we're, do you feel like things are getting better? Parna, what's your opinion? You're looking at the whole community, quite literally. And yeah. you probably have some data. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think the key is really to think about it as like, okay, what, what, even if it's small, what can I do to make a difference, right? Because like you said, I've been in so many women in, in tech panels and, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I, I got into this last minute, I'm like, what, what are we going to talk about? Like, is it going to be the same old, you know? Not with this girl. Oh <laughs> Heck no. We don't do that. We don't do the same old yeah. anything. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I think it, it's really important to think about, you know, no matter what, like, how can I make the the ecosystem, the, the you know, the, the micro environment around me better? And I've had the opportunity um, to work with some amazing women uh, who I've learned from and who have helped me build that network and get, you know get those connections and advance in my own career and you know community as well so I think it's it's important to think about it as what what can I do and not just women right everybody has no, to think about I love that and, and the what, little things I mean I even do? just yeah. saying one of my company values that my company is say the nice things out loud Exactly. And we think about so many times, you know, you haven't given that compliment or whatever, or like, you know, bros will like give each other the elbow up, like, nice one, bro, you know, and whereas like, we're like, oh, it was okay. And yeah, we yeah. get all like sheepish about it. <laughs> Kaz, when you're in a role of extreme advocacy, you're looking at developers. What, what's your opinion? Yeah, um, I 100% agree with that take. I would love to see in seven years. I don't know if that might be a little ambitious. Unfortunately, like I'm going with Cassandra. Maybe we're moving as fast as you know quantum. Maybe we are. Who knows? <laughs> but I would love to see us stop doing those. <laughs> and I think issue of women in diversity in general in technology is a very difficult one to solve, as we've all talked about before. I think something that's challenging about it is that there is some nuance to it. You can't just throw out there, oh, we're going to talk about women in technology. We're going to talk about we diversity. We hired a DEI officer. Uh -huh. like, everything's going to be fine now. Yeah. That doesn't help. It actually hurts <laughs> a lot of the time. <laughs> not, not even close. Not even yeah. close. Because when we're calling out, um, we need to do this special thing because there is a problem. We're calling out that there is a problem <laughs> to begin with. So there's always this fine balance of we need to fix the problem, so we need to talk about it. But we also need to not make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> by making it feel more real by doing, um, I don't know, things that exacerbate the issue. So me, we have to be careful. I love that. <laughs> give, me, give me some examples of some action steps that you're taking that are nuanced like that. Yeah, so I am a volunteer for Ada Academy, which is Rad. a program for training gender diverse people who are working their way into technology from other fields. Um, and I volunteer with them as an industry mentor. So cool. folks in this program get two mentors. They get one person who's been through the program before, and then they get an industry mentor who can be anyone from the industry, someone who is going to help them understand what this industry is and what they're getting themselves into. And I talk to a lot I of- I think it's actually a big part of the barrier too. Yes, yeah. so true. And I talk to a lot of men actually who want to help out with these kinds of things. And they're like, oh, but can I? Is my voice 
one of the ones that's welcome in this space? Would I just be getting in the way of these people that were trying to get in? I'm always like, no, we need to support them. <laughs> we need mentorship and we need the folks who are there to share their knowledge. So. <laughs> and have you seen some folks come through that program and go on to be super successful? Oh, absolutely, yeah. The I'm folks that I have worked with coming through that program, I've been a mentor for like six or seven mentees now, and they are so driven. They do such amazing things. It's awesome. I tangentially find the underdog sometimes has a little extra drive, a yes. little extra fight. I've even, even seen some of them present at KubeCon. <laughs> Love to hear <laughs> that full circle on your stage coming out of your program. That's fantastic. Yeah. Isha, what do you think? Oh, so many thoughts. First of all, I can't I wait have, to hear them all. I have <laughs> <laughs> bad news. We are actually moving sometimes in the last three years, we move in the wrong direction. We went in the wrong direction. Yes. No, so I we, can we, sense. We, <laughs> yes, we had more women leaving and not returning yeah. after the pandemic. So we did. They're the ones that teach the kids at home. Yes. Yeah. So we are still moving in the right direction, but not as fast as possible. So that's, that depresses me a little bit because I know other communities. I, I, I have seen other communities yeah. where they have this ratio that it's like, how did you do it? Like, I honestly go and ask, how did you manage? Like, what is the secret sauce? Yeah. What? What should we be doing? Because in the Java community where yeah. I'm from, uh, we're actually worse than this one. Let me tell you that you are teaching us some things that the Java community doesn't have our ratio is even lower. So I'm the one that is like... You should be the face of Java then. Feel we like should be doing something here. Like, well, anyway. How, what, do you, what do you think is the resistance in that? Why, why, do you think, why do you think we're not changing? Why do you think it's not getting better? Oh, so many reasons. First of all, people do not recognize that we have a problem. I, I sit down with a lot of They men. think we solved it when we yes, put exactly. three women in power. And like then, you know. what, you, what you said, <laughs> we already have an officer, we have a program, that, that's it, isn't it? Like, that's the only thing right, that it's all times. Women feel empowered at the organization, right? Yes, no, 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 but you no. need, like, and, and for example, you still have these confusing ideas, like this is a women in tech breakfast, and men shouldn't go. I'm like, no, you should go because we need allies. You need to be a mentor, of course. I, I also part of the uh, uh, mentorship program yeah. online, not for like a little bit like that, but it's for refugees, for example, <laughs> people that really want to go into technology and they are like learning at odd hours of the day. <laughs> so, yeah, that's an interesting one. So, I but think we that's still, a great point. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, it is because they need like they are schedule in flexibility. A, Exactly. It's so simple, but no. some companies are so rigid about stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Being fully async or, or having flexible hours, is, it makes a big difference. Totally, and totally. And the learning process can be at different hours. Of so. course. And everyone's brain is more excited at different times of the day. You know, we don't, we don't know what we're doing. We're all jet lagged. <laughs> Nobody even knows what day it is half the time when we go to shows <laughs> like this. So, and I mean, we're all, just, we're all just doing our best. You talked about something that I think is really, actually, all three of you did. I want to talk a little bit about allyship. And I'm, I am the first person to admit I would not be sitting where I am today or doing what I do if it weren't for a flock of middle-aged white men who have, who have gone out of their way, identified what they saw as potential. I won't put words in their mouth, but okay, they weren't wrong. And, <laughs> and, and helped elevate me or help coach me through certain moments or, or empower me. And I, I, what I don't like about some of the conversations that we've been having and, and even through some of the last few years is, is to your point, men feel scared to be a part of that conversation. They don't know if they can attend. They don't know if they're welcome. You know, they're just trying to get out of our way. It can't just be a conversation we're having in the ladies' room, which yeah. is what it feels like half the time and, and what it's been for, for a really long time. And, and it really, uh, I mean, it, it, it deeply disappoints me. One of my friends did something actually extraordinarily clever. Matt, I'm giving you a big shout out right now. Uh, in the UK, he had a he did a call, it's called they call it Silicon Beach over there. I'm not exactly sure he's going to the beach in London. And anyway, we'll just leave that. But but he uh, he had a the, the lineup was all women, but he didn't tell any he didn't make a big deal out of it. Mm. So when people just showed up to the event, all female lineup, and he brought it up at the end. And the gender ratio was 50-50 pretty much in the room, which was cool because the women will bring we do bring out the other women at least to come see us. But on the flip side, what I really loved about that, and when I asked him, I was like, you didn't want to advertise? Because for him, it would have been a good advertisement, right? I've got this whole yeah. power-packed female lineup, blah, blah, blah. He goes, if I did, the men wouldn't come. And it totally broke my heart because how many times have we been in an all-male lineup forever? So true. But I think, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I think it's really, uh, I don't know, there, there's, to your point, we're going sometimes in the wrong direction. And I don't think we're as 
far along the path as we might think we are. And I think seeing is believing. So I'm hoping that if you're a young woman right now watching this program or anyone of any gender diversity, first of all, we celebrate you. We're here to empower you. We're here to be your ally. But more importantly, keep fighting the good fight. We're, we're definitely out here. We're definitely going to try. Uh, what, uh, what have been some of the stepping stones? You're all in like extremely cool. I feel like I feel cooler sitting at this <laughs> table right now having you all here. What have been some of the stepping stones that that have helped you get to where you are? Pranav, I'm going to start with you because yeah. this is your show. Yeah, sounds. Uh, and I'll start with the example of like how CNCF does it, right? Like when we do the review the proposals and invite. Uh, decide who to invite to speak in the conference. We, we are really intentional about gender diversity. We are very intentional about yeah. giving the opportunity to first time conference speakers, right? Because like you apply to speak at any conference, they're like, give that. me give this me the so video important. of yes. your previous conference talk, but I don't have one. So what do I do, right? Uh, and then also being intentional about like, this is, this is Amsterdam. So we really prioritize European uh, speakers so that, you know, they are able to speak within their own community and share ideas among themselves. So and bring their community in yeah, to, bring, the, to this community. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think it's, it's really about like, you know, being objective about things. And I'll give you an example, like, you know, uh, when, when there's a really important project at work and, you know, you want to, uh, you, know, you want to identify a leader to drive the project, you know, the obvious choice would be like, you know, the loudest person in the room. And more often than not, it's not the, it's not the woman uh, who's the loudest voice in the room. So again, it's um, about coming up with like a very objective criteria. Very like, okay, wh what do we want this leader to do? and what are the qualifications of this leader and then cast a wide net look at all the leaders in the organization look at the women because they are not probably not going to raise it, raise their hand and right. be the loudest that voice in the room is hard. and so i think you know just making turning everything objective and being intentional about things really helps what are uh, so you mentioned you know really being strict in criteria for speaking i love that cuz holy I became a host and a, and a speaker because I saw too many boring guys on stage. And I literally just sat there one day and I was like, I can do it better than they can. Forget this. Like, I'm just going to make a career out of this. Oh, my God. Yeah, go ahead. No, I you, feel like you, you said say, moments. You say something because usually one of the critiques, and let me tell you that at the beginning, it, it affected a lot of my, my career. They were like people coming up to me and saying, you have that spot because you're a woman. I'm like, oh, yes. oh, I, get that all the time. I just felt that in my soul. Yep. And mm -hmm. I'm like, <laughs> oh my you God. Know, I, I mean, yep. women, we're damn good. <laughs> we are not loud, but we are damn good. <laughs> and if you see a woman in technology, yep. like, listen yes. to her because she's flourishing in an environment that is totally that is shit on her the entire time of her so yeah. you want somebody and probably that sexually know. assaulted her and god no. knows what else so so if you yeah. want somebody mm -hmm. that, that knows how to solve problems that's her do you know someone that is like enduring and knows how to continue resilience I, yeah. and is passionate because you require passionate you require intelligence you require like love for technology and and to keep out to the community because if you see all like all ourselves we're giving back to the community yeah yeah so i'm with you you God, have to yes, be objective you, just it. Yep. you have to be objective because the place that we are having here is not because we have something different here yeah <laughs> it's because we are good from here to here mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> that's it I just got goosebumps, first of all. That was like, <laughs> whoa. But, but, but you're, you're absolutely spot on. It was actually a theme of KubeCon. I was there in October 2021 in LA. Mm -hmm. Totally different vibe. Sidebar, we've come a long way since then. Yeah. But the, the theme was resilience realized, I think, or something like that. Yep. And, and, and it really, <laughs> as you were thinking about that, I'm like, wow, how appropriate is that? Because you're right. We have had to, to fight harder and to do endure so much like like oh because you're a woman or i mean i'm a tall blonde woman you know what they say about that yeah. oh how'd you get here yeah oh, i'm sure no i didn't suck my dick here actually i fucking use my mind and and believe it or not that's the most powerful thing that that all of us have here and i i i i hate that like that phone call i'm sure all of us have gotten that phone call well i guess you kind of got that phone call yesterday this is different as i'm sure you can tell but but get that phone call you know they're like oh there's three men on a panel can you join us to be the woman mm -hmm. oh but we don't have any more speaker budget or we don't have any more whatever but well you know like you can just i should come have up a days it. since 
calendar. Yeah. <laughs> in my yes. Seriously, though, yeah. it's 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 one of those things. Like, don't do that if you're an organizer. Start with the the right people. Yeah. For yep. the stage. So so just quickly, I, what was. Was there a lot of diversity? I've been sitting here on our stage, unfortunately, and so I'm not getting to see a lot of your stage. What was the diversity like for the lineup this year? Um, uh, the, the the foundation will uh, publish a transparency report right. like shortly I after. Actually, I always look forward to that. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, I read them. But again, <laughs> I, I I don't remember the numbers to, top of my head, but we had specific goals, like numbers to meet, and we met or exceeded like wow. all of those goals this year. So <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes me feel really good. Yeah, and I think the other thing I would like to uh, highlight is um, it, when we are selecting the talks, we are very intentional and try to avoid groupthink. Yeah. Like you know, all all three co-chairs, we individually review all of the talks and we se- say yes, no, or maybe. Uh, independently so we're not getting biased by each other and we're not going like oh like you know this speaker like yeah hey, he's great <laughs> yeah we, of course you should have it and you know not oh, yeah, we, always have someone. we all know the same 10 men who speak at yeah, all of this yeah. stuff yeah. Yeah. So their names. they're smart and lovely too but they're also like, yeah and I think I, I learned <laughs> yeah yeah French, French, yes. <laughs> yeah and I learned that you know that's a great thing right because like you know in, in an interview panel what happens is like everybody gets together and then the the loudest person influences the group. So I think it's it's about being intentional and you know countering bias. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Wow. I I I don't want to end this panel. <laughs> Unfortunately, the nice white gentlemen in my ears are telling me that our time <laughs> is up. Had to do it, baby. That was just for you. <laughs> uh, but I know we're really really sad to do this. Ishel, Aparna, Kaslin, seriously, thank you. Genuinely, both as a human being and as a host, we're really grateful that you were able to make the time, bring your energy. And I love the realness, the rawness, the authentic opinions. We need more of it on the cube. John Furrier, I hope you're listening. And uh, thank you, the audience, for coming along this ride. I hope you learned something fun and new from, from all of us. You should definitely follow these ladies, follow their work, follow their leadership, and know that we're rooting for you in whatever journey you're trying to be resilient in in your current life. My name is Savannah Peterson, coming to you live here from KubeCon EU in Amsterdam. We're the cube, the leading source for emerging tech news. <laughs>